Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So let me start with a question. Who of you knows what little yellow birds have to do with the biggest problem that we face in healthcare? Let me explain this. In the past centuries, millions of people worked in coal mines. The work in coal mines was extremely dangerous. The biggest danger that you could have encountered while working in the coal mine was a gas leak, in which the gas would float the mine and could bring the mine into explo to explosion, and also the ore could bring the all the miners inside to suffocate. The problem is that gas is invisible. So the moment that people act in the mine actually smelled the gas, it was already too late. So what did people do to solve this problem? People are smart and always find a solution. So they put little canary birds into the mines. Why? The canaries have, have a very, very superior sense of smell. And with this sense of smell, they can detect the gas before the miners could. The canary would send an alarm to the miners by, sto uh, by the stop, uh, stop singing, hence could warn the miners about the situation and could help them to escape. We, I believe that we have exactly the same situation in healthcare. Every eight minutes, people die from a preventable disease. This is eight people every single, every single minute. Why is this the case? Again, it's exactly the same case. Diseases get discovered too late. Symptoms of diseases get discovered too late. Now, when we know this, why haven't we done anything about it? Why have we not discovered symptoms earlier? There's clearly visible symptoms that we have not been able to detect for l lots of diseases. The question is simple. It ha same as with the mi miners before the canneries, is it has not been possible. It has not been possible to automatically detect symptoms for a wide population of people. It was not possible to put like an individual cannery on each and every person in the world. We believe that this has changed now. The smartphones that you all carry in the pockets and the wearables that I've seen on a lot, on a lot of wrists already, include the most advanced sensor devices that we have in history. And they are mainstream by now. So the phone that you carry around does have like 22 different sensors. Maybe to get an idea, who of you knows what the gyroscope is? Go on. So you have like, uh, you have uh, you have sensors in the phone that like with gyroscope and isometer, I explained this in a little bit, have an 18 axis analysis of movement. You can detect micro movements. You have a magnetometer that's there to equalize the, e equalize the, um, uh, the compass with which you can, can detect how close somebody is to, ma to magnetic radiation. You actually have, like, have a barometer, uh, like a, a GPS sensor, all kinds of sensors. And in the watch, you also have the same sensors, including heart rate, and more will follow. The sensors that you have in the, in, in the phone are so precise, to give an illustration, this is how, how, how this works. So you can have a look at, like, this is one of the sensors, and you can see that there's like six digits after, uh, after, after, after zero that record movements. So the, 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 the sensor is so precise that they it, it could actually detect if I'm picking up the phone or if you're picking up the phone, just by the speed and, and the angle of picking this up. So what we do at Expert is we take these data, th this raw data, extract it automatically um, and translate this into symptoms of diseases. So let me make this illustratable with an example. We are already doing this for diabetes. So for this, let me introduce you to Russell. Russell is a 23-year-old diabetic, uh, type 1 diabetic from Stanford, and has an extremely important job interview today. So what happens now? Because Russell was so excited about this potential dream job, he slept nervously, and he overslept. Looking at the time, he, look, he realized that he's already running late, panics, runs out of the house, forgets to, to eat breakfast, and in an attempt of making up time to get there, get there, get there early and catch his appointment, he runs on the bike. He, he runs on the bike instead of taking the metro as he usually would. Now, those of you who are familiar with diabetes know what's going to happen. Russell will collapse due to uh, suffering a hypoglycemic event. 
where blood sugar levels dropped below, uh, below a, a certain line due to an uh, increase of energy expenditure and lack of, lack of food intake. Needless to say, he will not get the job. Now, let me explain this on this example, what we can do to solve this. Let's explain this with the, with the expert version. So the three cases, the three events that, um, that are showed right now to, to trigger uh, Russell going to the hospital, it's not something we made up. It is something that we got from interviews from uh, type 1 diabetics and from diabeticians that take care, of, um, take care of those patients. So what we could do is to detect those three things automatically. So number one, detecting sleep. Russell oversleeps. We can tell because we can tell from the motion sensors in your phone when you wake up and when you don't. Those of you who have done the iOS 10 update know, now know that uh, Apple can do this too. Number two, detecting meals. With the wearable, we are able to detect if somebody had a meal or not, based again on the, mo on the motion sensors and with a mix of heart rate. So we can know from Russell, as Russell is type 1 diabetic, has a usually very, very linear, li linear uh, type of day. We can s know that he usually would have had uh, breakfast between 8.30 and 9, and now we see that he doesn't, that he exercised, but he did not have food. This is still not enough to, uh, to send him, uh, to, uh, to notify him and to be alarmed. But now the third event, uh, cycling. If we detect cycling in a piece of time where we usually don't see cycling, which we usually see Evolution a life. very gradual pattern of, of, of running the metro, we would now would be alarmed because now we have three things together. So we know in within the 25 minutes, three off events happened. And now we would run, we would, uh, without taking any medical data from the, C the CGM, we could warn uh, Russell while he's on the bike. So we can send him a push saying, it depends what we want to say exactly, but basically saying, this is an off day. We've seen that you, uh, th that you got up late. We've seen that you didn't have breakfast and now you're cycling. Please check your blood sugar levels. And once Russell in that moment can adjust his blood sugar levels, get to the office in time, rock the interview, and get the job. This is how, uh, how, how we do this. On the one hand side, what we do is we track those individual events. So we uh, take all the events that like, uh, like are, ex um, are important, for example, like sk skipping breakfast, and we take them um, and, and, and we find a pattern to detect them. Same for food, same for falling down the stairs, same for like, getting shorter steps, same for uh, starting to sit down more frequently. On the other side, we put this data and we put this data together with CGM data, so continuous blood glucose measurement data from the patients. And we learn, we learn about the patterns. So we add a data layer on the, da on the medical data. So we add the contextual layer of what the patient's actually doing. We're adding an individualized day journey without the user having to log anything. We don't believe in uh, people logging anything. I think these times are over. So one important thing to stress is that we do not develop, we do not develop applications. We believe that in order to reach a change of a certain magnitude, you have to think systems. You can't think only of apps. So what we did, we developed our technology in the form of an SDK that can now be integrated into any existing solution out there that already has a patient to user relationship. Now, the beauty about this is that it is not only applicable to diabetes. Diabetes is our first case, which is extremely interesting for us because we can, it's a very data-driven disease and we get learnings of what happens immediately. Now, think that, ev that basically every disease is relevant where symptoms, physical symptoms, play a role. So all those digital, digital biomarkers could play a role. Think of depression, think of stroke, think of heart rate, uh, heart, ra heart rate failure, cardiovascular disease, all this will, will play a role. So maybe a very, a very quick comment uh, to the team. So wh why, why are we doing this? Why, why do we care? More than half of the parents in our founding team died because of diseases that could have been uh, prevented or could have been foreseen otherwise through symptom detection. We put together a team of serial entrepreneurs, data scientists, and medical doctors to change some of that. We are, we, and we've done it before. As mentioned, we already founded and sold two companies previously. We published the most prestigious scientific magazines and we registered as several patents. If you want to join us on the journey, if you want to uh, help, help us, we, de we developed a study app that can be used in clinical research and we already, already kicked off our own clinical trials. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Sebastian. Okay. So, no, whoa, 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 whoa. You're not going anywhere. I am. Okay, <laughs> <stay here. laughs> we haven't heard from the cage for a while. <laughs> and we always have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, wow. I, one of the things that I think is so um, interesting in the last part of your, your presentation is that all of your employees really have uh, a huge why. They, they lost their parents to something that was, that was preventable, and I think that's a lot of why we're all here as well. We want to prevent uh, the preventable, and we want to approach things that we, we can cure and have the technology and the ability to cure. Um, I want to I want to make you ask a question because you're the the diabetic of the two, and uh, uh, I've been eating your snacks. Mm -hmm. Diabetics have the best <laughs> snacks with them. But um, that's yeah, <laughs> that's true. Apparently, <laughs> I always wear a pack of snacks with me. So anyway, um, to uh, I'm very interested in in how your your approaches to the future. When you're looking at your company, you have been forming the company surrounding diabetes right now. Uh, that is primary your primary focus group. Uh, but for the future, you also uh, mentioned that you were going to address people that have depression and all the other uh, symptoms that mm -hmm. are related to having a chronic illness. Do you believe that when you're looking at uh, a chronic ill patient that you need to redefine certain indicators uh, according to the disease that you're talking about? Like, for instance, when you're talking about a patient that has a Crohn disease or uh, epilepsy or asthmatics or... You know, th there are different indicators where you need to um, address the sensors I I present inside of your mobile devices too. How are you addressing that as a company? Um, so first of all, we focus on di diabetes first. We're like a small company. We're like seven people in hiring, so we'll be nine people in the future. So we can't do uh, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, and depression at the same time. I think that's a learning from, uh, from the past. But generally, I think that the problem, uh, problem actually exists everywhere. So the overall problem is that the, if, it, if it's a doctor or any uh, player in healthcare does not know what's hap actually happening on the side of the patients. So they rely on patients logging, uh, logging their data, which patients don't do. And based on this, they do decisions. So it's like a very much a crap in, crap out, uh, cr a crap out model. Um, so we think that, like on the, for example, you mentioned you mentioned uh, Parkinson. On like on Parkinson, um, we also uh, we also see that like you could measure tremors automatically. So not in the moment where you show up at the at the practitioners and they say, okay, let's do the test now. This doesn't work. This is not a normal situation. This is not a situation where a symptom occurs. What would be relevant is that you have a wearable, you, you give it to somebody that might be affected anyway, and we are in the background and looking for this pattern. If we see this pattern, then we can notify the person and say, maybe we suggest a doctor's appointment or uh, send, send you to the clinic or send, uh, send, send a signal to, to the doctor that, that is treating you. So we believe that like a lot of um, the, the, that like a lot of the sensorics will come into use, very practical use for like a wide, wide area of, uh, of, uh, of indications. And uh, yeah, to solve this problem, yeah, we can do one by one. And uh, yeah, but we are happy about any support that we can do in other fields. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, I think um, this is my next question because you said you wanted to do one at a time uh, and that you were just starting with diabetes. And diabetes, uh, are, diabetics are really the first health trackers back to the ancient Egyptians. And uh, one of the things I'm wondering is we've been talking about at Digital Health Days, who's going to push this forward and who's going to push um, the home tracking. And I think maybe... Maybe I'm reading into it too much, but is it is it diabetics who are really going to push this into their their hospitals? You are very proud of the fact that you question your doctor and you say, "No, I want this kind of uh, regulator scanner, that kind of thing." Yeah, I, actually, I think, and I agree with you on that. We have been one of the most uh, data-producing uh, patients in the whole healthcare field. Uh, so when it comes to to getting more tools available, uh, uh, of course, as a welcoming addition to to managing our disease. Um, but uh, what I always question is is how how is a patient going to be using the technology that is being offered? Because sometimes I I noticed um, during my studies as a as a master a student uh, that uh, oftentimes you can see that that patients are getting a little bit technology tired um, there's so much on the market right now there's so much every week you can see a new app that is being introduced and I think it's very important that that's something that I see in in 
your idea as a company that when you're developing an SDK that is being that is running on the background and not interfering too much into the the personal life of a patient, that that might actually be the the good approach on that. Uh, was that also the the reason? The, the the whole initial idea to keep this in the background of the patient? Um, you're asking if that was the w well, what was your question? Well, more or less, sorry, to, I, I think... No I, less than four yeah, questions. Yeah, I think, I think, I think <laughs> I actually have to do it in like one question. Uh, when you're looking at how uh, patients are utilizing products and services uh, right now, um, what you see is that people are very tired of using this app for this and that app for that and this app for a, a whole other reason. Your company, from what I understand, is doing everything in the background, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, uh, I agree to to most of the notions that you, that, uh, that you mentioned. That, like, I mean, b having diabetes is basically a full-time job, right? So, like, everything that you can take off somebody's hand. Uh, is is help and it's time that the person could uh, could um, yeah like uh, time that the person could use for something else. So if you think about it, does it actually make sense that you sit down and tr and like write down your sleep and like the meals and like when you've been running? Is that does that is that really necessary? Um, if it can be do do done not automatically, maybe it makes sense to leave more time for the more more critical things um, in in life of, uh, of somebody with diabetes, or like leave the interactions um, with the, with the, with the doctor for something more important than actually asking how much did you move uh, yesterday. So that's absolutely a notion. And like I would like to mention on the one thing that you mentioned before that uh, yeah we we chose um, diabetes for for that reason. So like people with diabetes, we, there's this very strong community that says. We want this data. Why is the status quo in all the devices right now as it is? Why isn't is not there not more? So we got like very very positive responses from the diabetes community that also helps us actively to improve this to, by delivering us data sets, uh, by giving us suggestions, by like giving us examples of what parts of the life could we could be improved with predictive analytics. So I, I I agree that this is like a very that this is the reason why we chose this path as a starting point. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic, and we, yeah. we appreciate all of our, our diabetics researchers, innovators, and diabetics, and hope that you continue pushing this forward. And we wish you luck expanding into other, other manageable diseases. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Good luck. You're being, you're, you're being very nice and friendly to everyone. <laughs> oh, this, it's, it's that's right. I was supposed <laughs> yeah. to be what the bad to this, cop What happened to this, this bad cop thing <laughs> we had going on this morning? And you were going to... I was no. really excited, <laughs> but he did a no, great job. I, I actually have, I have two questions for, for both of you here. And one is, of course, I mean, you, you're talking about as well why you picked diabetes. And, and I can feel the same way that, I mean, that a lot of the apps that we see are doing that. And, and you know, why is that? And we, we touched on that. But, but then in, in a, that's not a speculative, but in a... In a Let's just say, what would be the, the, uh, any other very easy way to get into that kind of business if we're not picking diabetes? If we're looking like uh, to other entrepreneurs out there today, what would be uh, suitable uh, for measuring and following up? That's my first question, and that goes f for you in there as well. Uh, what, what, you know, what could we work with here? Um, and, uh, and then second, uh, no, I'll come back to my second question. I'll do the first one there. I think there's like not, not a general disease where I would say, okay, this is an easy disease, uh, try, try doing that one. I think it really depends on like if, if this is supposed to be advice for um, other entrepreneurs, like do take something that you really, really care about or have like deep, deep, yeah. deep knowledge in, um, in because otherwise it's going to be really hard to, to be motivated. So I think that like um, it helps us a lot that people with diabetes actually like what we're doing. So yeah. it's, uh, it well, sounds I mean very straightforward, uh, <laughs> but it's actually like uh, I've done companies <laughs> where this was not necessarily the case. So yeah, uh, but any, any, are there any, sort of any criteria? Yes, there has to be a strong community. They have to be in a certain age or a certain kind of uh, tech driven. Is there any, yeah. any sort of criteria that we can nail down to sort of find the target group that are, that are suitable for these kind of things? I believe that there's le less about them than more about you. So like you need to find something that actually is a problem. Which yeah. sounds very easy, but it's not necessarily that easy. So it's like, w this is the one problem, this target group of people with uh, depression, diabetes, uh, stroke, high risk. Hey, uh, I, I work at a tech university. I know okay, what it is yeah. with people that have a solution that is looking for a problem. So yeah, don't worry about exactly. it. Exactly. So I think <laughs> it's more about that. Like from my, our point of view, I can't, I can't really say that there's... Um, that it's, it's like one disease that is, is better than the others. I yeah. think like from, if you uh, yeah, address people that from the panel before, like VCs, it should be something that, uh, yeah, it's, it's big. So the market is big enough. Um, but other than that, like I, or it's causing substantial costs. But other than that, I wouldn't say that there's like one better yeah, than okay. the other. 
Well, I know our time is up there. Uh, Sebastian, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. And